still available. So what you're looking at here is the Vivor 12 inch exhaust fan. Now they have 14 and I think they have bigger than that. 14, there might have been 18. I gotta go look on the site again. But for me, I knew from the measurements, if they were if it was a 12 inch one, it would fit between my rafters, which would save me a lot of work from having to cut rafters, reframe stuff, and, and as you can see. It fit perfectly in between. Now I had to like shift it into place and stuff. Um, I put outdoor weather seal on the whole inside of it, and then I went outside the garage and sealed the whole outside. Now you could put this in with bolts and have somebody else outside put the bolts through, and you could tighten them up. Me, I put rev nuts in the sheet metal, and then just ran the bolts in with lock washers on them into the 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 sheet metal itself and it's sturdy as can be i wanted it up about as high as i could get it and that's as high as i could go with the power cord without running an extension cord now the nice thing about this thing is it comes with a thermostat and this thermostat has two hookups now you can buy these without a thermostat so i'm thinking if this thing works out good for me i'm going to get a second 12 inch one put it right beside it over here and uh, run it into this thermostat since there's one more plug on here. Without the thermostat, you plug it in. This is the speed it's going to run, full speed. With the thermostat, I'm on the highest setting right now. There are 10 settings, and I can go, let's see, I'll go down to 5. So it'll run it at half speed. It takes a second for it to register. Now there are flappers on the outside of the garage that open and close with the fan. Now they're almost closed right now. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but yeah, there, there's flaps out there. I also sealed the whole way around the outside while I was out there. There, there were seams in it and I just, I don't want weather coming in through that thing. So I made sure to uh, seal it up pretty good. Now, along with the thermostat, there are lots of things you can do here. Now this thermostat is powered by the fan. So the, the fan switch, if you unplug this, it turns off. So there's no batteries involved in this thermostat. It's all run by the power cord from the fan. Um, right now we're on on, right there is off. Uh, there's a timer, so you can set it to run for so long. Uh, there is automatic mode for High temp, low temp, high humidity, and low humidity. And then there is a alarm setting for high temp. It's off. Alarm setting for low temp. Now, I, I, I've not messed with those yet. High humidity, but anyways, I just have it on on right now. And I've been running it full blast because I just want to see how it works in here. And so far... I'm, I'm really liking it. Just notice when it's ramping up speed, it's showing here what the fan's actually doing. So it's up to six now, 10. So now it's on full blast. I'm pretty sure this is a humidity. It's 75 and, and it's probably about right because it's so humid as all get out in here. But I got this because of my painting and the exhaust fans in the door, I just don't think are enough. It's not getting the fumes from up top. That's why I wanted to put this in. Now, I, I could have put it higher, but then I would have needed an extension cord. Anyways, these were these aren't that expensive. I think with the thermostat, that 12-inch one is is like 99 bucks. Let me let me double check that. Oh, I forgot to add. This comes with the thermostat. It is a temperature sensor, and I just hung it off of here, which it's going to be pretty accurate over over there or away from the fan. I wouldn't want to get it right in the path of the fan because it would probably uh, show colder. And down here, it's going to show colder because my concrete's cool. So I kind of wanted it like in the middle of the garage right there. So hopefully that's pretty accurate. The 16-inch one is $108.99. A 10-inch 
10 inch one's 90.99. A 12 inch is what I got. It's 99.99. And it does show that there is a 24 inch, but it's not available right now. So, yeah, there there is, I guess, maybe the option of a 24 inch. But, yeah, it's, uh, it, keep in mind, it's a 12 inch, but the frame's a lot wider. Now, they give you all the measurements on the website, so you can do all your measurements yourself and, and figure it out. Now, if I would get another one of these 12 inch fans without the thermostat, it's $50.99. So, I can run a second one off of this thermostat, yeah. I thought it was a lot more how I'm, I might as well just go ahead and order it. Anyways, they're going to hopefully hook me up with a discount code. If there is, I'm going to put it down in the description. Um, this might be good for body work, too. It's going to suck all the fumes out. And it's blowing it out the backside of my garage, but I don't care. All right, it's next day. I like that fan so much that I did order another one. It was on earlier today because it did get really hot in here, but I have an AC unit over there. And I put a floor fan here blowing it over this way. And it's now 71 in here. I had that set to 72. It kicked off. I have it set at half speed. So whenever it does turn on, it turns on to the 5 setting. It works. And so I got a second one. I think that's really going to help with my paint fumes. I really do. So now I'm just going to kick this lift arm in here. So we're going to be working right there. I don't think we need to go back now right here it did bubble up up here i don't think we're going to get too in depth into that but i do need to figure out how to get the seal off without breaking all the clips oh they're just they're just christmas tree pins they are look at that so you do just pull them out or off all right then it doesn't travel down under the bottom. It's all right here. I don't know how bad this is going to be. Pretty, pretty bad, actually. That's a sheet. That's a piece of sheet metal right there, right off the top. But I got to do this on both sides. Let me go ahead and peel this trim off the rest of the way, and then uh, I'm going to try to fix this the best I can without having to do anything crazy if i got to put a piece of metal in there i'll put a piece of metal in there but i don't want to have to redo everything and this side's worse than the driver's side and i i really don't want to get this interior dirty i don't care if the door gets dirty i can re-clean it but i'm going to drape some plastic so bear with me i'm going to get this all ready and then i'm going to start cleaning this all up be real honest with you i was looking at this and i was thinking about welding a plate on here but all this part was is this outer shell here this is just one piece of metal this is a this is structure this is the rocker and it's solid i think what i'm going to do since this is just a beauty cover right here that is not structurally part of the vehicle i think i'm just going to do fiberglass strand fill this area that'll also keep the moisture from getting in behind here um what this is doing is i don't know where the moisture was coming from but it's coming in from the back side here now if i fill this in back here 
and then bring it out and smooth that all with fiberglass strand. Fiberglass strand does not uh, absorb water. It's waterproof and um, it actually will add a little bit of structure. But I think I'm just going to go that route instead of welding a piece on here that could possibly just rust again. I'm going to spray a rust inhibitor in here but then I also got to sand this again. I'm going to spray up in here with um, some some rust treatment up in here but then I'll sand I'll grind it again I gotta grind it with something rough uh, not just wire wheel so that way it sticks but before we do that let's see how bad the other side I know the other side wasn't as bad rust is always worse than it looks and that was worse than what I was thinking it was gonna be and that's always the occasion whenever whenever it comes to rust there's really no uh, telling how bad it is until you get into I can tell you right now this one I'm probably not it's not even gonna be through the front piece of it so let me see if I can get this off and eh, it's in between the plates that's the problem and <laughs> if I don't cut that piece off like I did the other side it's gonna do the same exact thing again and I don't know where it's coming in from because it's not rusting underneath above it it's just in between these places water was getting in here somehow and coming down here so I think I'm gonna have to do the same thing and cut this side off because it's bubbled out in between the plates yep that's what we're gonna do we're gonna cut right across that right across here try to clean this up but yeah let me go ahead and uh get this seal off and uh tape the door over so i don't get the interior all dirty and dusty All right, so I have both sides cleaned up about the best that I could. I've sanded it. I ran the grind wheel on it. I sanded it with 180 and the area around it and everything. Now I'm going to spray uh, that rust. Oh, let me find it. Now, this isn't the best rust reformer stuff you can get, but I've used it in a lot of applications, and it works just fine. So I'm going to spray this area. We're going to let it dry. I'm going to try to spray up in here as well. Uh, just the best I can. Um, then after that, I'm going to come back and hit it with 180 again and sand it down. Because you can see these deep areas. Uh, the rust is knocked out, but it's still dark there. That's where this is going to come in. Then when I sand over it, there's probably still going to be those dark areas, but it will at least have rust reformer in it. Um, and then we'll start hitting this with some uh, fiberglass strand filler. And uh, I'm going to tape off like where the original plate was. So tape down like this. And then I'm going to tape across here. We're going to put it on there. Then I can pull the tape off and it'll leave a straight line where that plate was. And it should kind of mimic it a little bit. And I'm also when I put the fiberglass strand on... I'm going to wipe it up so it backfills up inside of here and hopefully fills in some of that area so that the moisture and stuff doesn't come back down into here. Uh, it should go off to the sides. Honestly, you should probably drill like a hole, a relief hole somewhere because I don't know where this moisture is getting in at, but it's getting in somewhere and it's going to need somewhere to go. So like, honestly, there should be a relief hole in here somewhere. Uh, but maybe I can drill a little hole here on one side or the other. Might help it, honestly. Vehicles don't last forever. I know this isn't the right repair, is what you guys are going to tell me. Yes, it's not. But also, this is not a structural piece. It's just like a beauty cover. And also, uh, this thing has 130,000 miles on it. 
yes, it might reach 250, I'd say, but the rest of the vehicle is in really good shape, except for, you know, some dents. It, 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 it's not going to be perfect. So I'm just going to make this look as good as I can with what I got here without spending a lot of money. And uh, hopefully we don't have this rust issue again. I'm not going to have this rust issue again. Whoever buys it might. I doubt it. Honestly, I don't think it'll rust here again. But who knows? I could be wrong. All right, so after letting that dry and then re-sanding it, it kind of looks the same as it did before, but now that is that rust converter stuff, and that's sitting in the, the dips and stuff that still have, like, a little bit of dark. It's like a... I don't even know what it is. It's, it's just remnants of rust, but there's... I mean, I ran the wire wheel on it, you know. And this side looks about the same. So what we're going to do now is i got to clean these up now. Um, tape that area, like I said, so it looks like the original plate on there. And uh, we're going to add our fiberglass into there. Ashley came out and said my face was dirty. I said that's what it looks like when you work. That's what I'm talking about. Still very impressed with that, that fan. It keeps it, it, it was, keeps getting up to 72, it kicks on, drops back down to 71. It's taking the hot air from up here and sending it out there. It's pretty good. It'll be really good when there's two there. Ultimately, the best place to put one would be like way up there, but I, I, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> And then it would not run. There's the cord that comes with it would not run to that thermostat. There's just no way. So it is what it is. It's gonna work just fine. All right, I'm gonna try to mix this up. Fans just now kicking on. Look at that. Um, I'm gonna try to mix this up and get both sides before it dries. So, anyways, here's my area. Taped it all off. We need to mix it up. I'm even using an old used spreader. It's a short strand reinforced filler. It's a lot easier to work with than long strand. Long strand is, yeah, it's not, it's not fun. Now looking at this side, I'm definitely, I'm going to have to add some more, uh, like right around in here somewhere, uh, maybe a little bit over here. You don't, now that it's, it's sealed up, I don't have to use fiberglass strand filler, but I think since this one, it's like I undercut the metal a little bit right there. I think I will put a little bit more fiberglass strand on there, but as for this patch, the edges are sharp around it. Now you see there's, there's a, you know, some drips that came off there but once i sand those down that's going to look like the original patch that went across there now this is going to get all painted and stuff even though you know you can see a little bit of 
indents there. Uh, some filler primer will help with that. We're not painting this like with, with uh, regular automotive paint. We're going to paint this with uh, spray cans. I'm going to let this dry for a day. I'm going to come back tomorrow. The other side needs time to dry. I think I got enough on the other side, but I can tell you right now, this fiberglass strand filler is takes a long time to sand. I'm going to use some real coarse sandpaper. I have 180. Uh, on the DA, I don't think I have anything like real low, but D, uh, DA sander would be good for that. Being that this isn't like a crucial part, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I still want it to look decent because you're going to see it right there. So I'll work on that tomorrow. Next day, it's actually quite nice in here today. I got, what I got over there? 67. 67 degrees in here. That That's awesome. I'm going to sand this down. We're going to see where we're at. We're going to try our best to make it look factory, but this should sand off really nice. Uh, and look like a factory panel. So let's uh, get the sand in. Now for this repair, and anytime you have bare metal, you want an epoxy primer or a self-etching primer. A self-etching primer is going to etch itself into that bare metal and it's going to stick. Where regular paint is not going to stick as well. So I'm going to hit it with a couple coats of this and then uh, look through what I had and gloss black engine enamel is what we're spraying on her. Um, enamel is a strong paint. Yes, it's not a two-part paint, so it's uh, you could use if you're gonna go the cheap route, a single stage with a hardener in it, like a tractor paint or something like that. Uh, the tractor paint I have, that thing takes it takes like over 24 hours for it to dry. It takes forever. So this is what we're gonna use. Hit it with a couple coats of self etching primer. Let it gas off. <laughs> and then hit it with the, the engine enamel. Uh, there's going to be a, a hard line here. It's, it's not going to be perfect, but this is... Remember, behind the door, there's a piece of trim that goes across. I'm going to try to spritz it across the top. You'll probably see this hard line like back where the door is. I should probably try to tuck that back in a little bit further. I try not to get the self-etching primer back there. It, it just needs to cover the bare metal, so we're going to try to keep it in this vicinity, okay?
for like a quick weekend job, which this video was three days. Of course, the first day was me putting that exhaust fan in. Uh, so this was actually only two days and it was only a couple hours a day. Uh, I was editing videos in between. Th that's only one coat. I'm going to do like one more coat of this enamel paint. But, I mean, eh, that looks pretty good for a cheap rust repair. Not even any welding. Now, yes, you can see the pitting below that, but it has been rust treated and then it's been coated and it should be okay because none of that is even metal. It's fiberglass strand filler. Um, now, I didn't get that hump shape perfect, but from the top, it is perfect. So that, that in sense, once I put that trim piece on, you're not even going to notice it, which I'm not gonna put that on today because I need to give this enamel uh, how, how long do they tell you this is even gas and oil resistant how about that well just my luck it says give it seven days to cure it gives it 24 hours before you can handle it but seven days to cure uh, next weekend I'm gonna throw that trim back on so I'm gonna throw another coat of paint on here how long does it tell you just within an hour should should be good I would think actually I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it some time the exhaust fans working great I love it the fumes are going out of the garage not staying in now on the benefit of this if you would have just left that alone it's just gonna get worse and worse and you're eventually it's gonna eat up into the upper panels or it's gonna eat through that rocker if you've seen right once I got that top layer off the bottom was solid. I, I don't know, that's probably multiple layers of steel, but it was rusting from in between those two. So just removing that steel that was rotted out and just adding that in is uh, going to make this last a lot longer than what it would have if I didn't touch it at all. I know the right way to do it would have been to add metal in there, but there's a lot more work involved. You're also welding. I don't know if there's insulation or anything in there and there's always a chance when you're welding on something that you can't get on the inside of that there's something in there that can catch fire and then that's a different story once you catch something on fire that's within a panel yeah that's that's fun you can't put it out you just gotta let it burn and also by adding steel in there yes you can paint the backside and stuff but once you put a couple tacks on there that burns off on the backside or it contaminates it and it's very hard to weld. I added a substance in there that's guaranteed not going to rust. I mean, maybe the metal underneath, but now it kind of sealed that metal underneath where it should not get moisture in it now. This is the first time I've ever done a repair like that, but that actually, it looks like I added steel in there, doesn't it? I mean, you can't even tell. Factory. You can go the extra mile if you want to, and then all this etched steel down here you could have added some uh fiberglass strand in there or just regular putty and then sanded it but uh i'm coating it so it's still sealed in it should be good to go after this but uh yeah i need to add some more paint i think we're ready we're ready where's my can we're gonna add some more on there and this is just a real quick job this enamel goes on very nice looks very glossy when it's on there and uh, gives you a, a nice finish all right look at that don't go too crazy with this because it'll run Ask me how I know. I'm the expert at runs. Paint runs, not like in my draws. This side I did a lot better on. It looks really good. I even kept the bottom line pretty straight. Uh, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time. I could have made the other side look perfect. I could have spent a lot more time sanding and stuff, but it's really not worth the time uh, or energy. I wasted a whole weekend on just doing this. So, you know, right here is the piece of metal that I took off. Look at the back side of this. 
Now this is still a solid piece of steel, but it wouldn't have been any time at all. That would have been coming through the front. The, pa the paint would have bumbled off and then it would have started eating the backside, the rocker itself. And it's just better off just to remove that since it's rusting from the inside. Now the next video on this, I would like, now I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I would like to get this thing ready and painted next weekend. So look forward to that. I have to finish a tad bit of body work here. I ended up putting self etching primer over this cause this thing, there was some bare metal here and I had it sitting outside. So I just coated it with self etching primer so it wouldn't rust and look, it didn't rust, thank God, because it sat out in a lot of rain. Um, I coated everything that was had a little bit of bare metal. So I got to prep the rest of this fender, which will be clearing the whole thing. I need to sand this whole hood, which sh should not need any body work. There's no dents in it. There's a couple of scratches. I could probably sand them out. Bumper needs sanded, and this rear quarter panel needs sanded. And I, I, yeah, I gotta leave it go. As much as I want to paint that bumper, I'm gonna let it go. So I need to finish sanding this quarter panel, which you can see is not very big on these. And I need to take the tail light out. So we'll finish prepping this, prepping up there, and then hopefully paint. That would be great because I would, and then it'll probably be the next weekend final assembly. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I guess that's all. I'm going to put another coat of paint on this and I'll show you when it's finished. That's going to be all I get into. Guys, you know firsthand, I'm not one to toot my own horn, but right now I'm tooting my horn. I'm going to tell you that right now. I did not expect that repair plus the engine enamel to blend in that well. It looks really good. Now, if you're really looking for it, yes, you'll be able to notice it, but I wiped down the area around where the paint was, and I mean, you tell me, I mean, okay. All right, well, I gotta wait until it dries before I can really wipe that area. But you can, you can kind of see where the tape line was. I can't wipe it right there now because the paint's still wet. Tell you right now, I don't think anybody is even gonna notice that that was repaired or done like that. I really don't. So anyways, if you like that repair, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment or something. Come on, we need to get this channel rolling. You guys, I mean, some of you are doing your job, but you, you other people, you're slacking, okay? Subscribe button, there's one, wait, it's below here, yeah? It, there's like 800 videos on my channel. Where, where are you guys at? Where are you at? If your mom needs a hole filled, hit me up. Hit that dislike button if she needs that. Let me know. I'm a, I'm a good filler. See you on the next episode of On Rack. Come in. Hi, Stella. Hi. Oh, here it comes to me. It's, look, the old kitties. No, it's up, huh? Hi, Stella. Huh? Daddy's home. Daddy's Daddy's in from the garage now. It's time to give him lovings. Oh. Oh, oh, you fell over. Yeah, rubble mommy sneaker. Hey. Hey. Why, why did you not come see me when I come in? Huh? Why did you...
Let me pet you. Son of a... No. Are you guarding mommy? Huh? No. Look at the new cat tower that mommy got. Look, look at this thing. Brothers. Do you want to say bye-bye? Don't you, don't you attack it. Wait, I think it's shown on the camera. <laughs>